Yes, he is, Sam. The big rat. The big rat? The brain, impulse, galvanoscope, record and transfer. Uh, with respect, Mac, I find it hard to believe that it has the capability you've described. It has, Sam. You'll see. Odd, Joe. Good. Now we can begin. Is this it, Dad? This is it. You know what to do. Now, Sam. I have recorded my brain patterns on that reel of tape. So, electronically, it now stores my knowledge and my experience. In a moment, I'm going to transfer that knowledge and experience to little Joe. Okay, Dad. I'm ready. Relax, Joe. Don't answer me. Just relax. Relax completely. is the storage access time of the French C-3400 computer? The answer is five nanoseconds. Is that the correct answer, Mac? That is the correct answer. Mac, it's been a long interrogation, but I just want to ask Joe one more question. Okay, Sam. But then I think we will call it a day. Right, Mac. Now, Joe, we've been talking now for over an hour about the C-3400 computer. My last question. How many transistors are used in it? That's easy. None. Pulse light beams and integrated circuits make them unnecessary. Oh, Mac, it's incredible. Just <laughs> incredible. Well, Sam, as far as I'm concerned, it's just a, a dream come true. How long will Joe retain all this knowledge? As soon as we remove the electrodes, he'll be back to normal. It all seems like a dream, Dad. How did I do? You did just great, Joe. Well, Sam, what do I ask, convex computers? Tell me, how much is this invention worth? You know, Mac, every time I emerge from that laboratory of yours, I'm surprised to find myself in an old English cottage. That's the way we like it, Sam. A combination of the old and the new. You're asking how much this invention was worth. Now look, do me a favor, will you? Before you mention this to another living soul, give me 12 hours. How do you mean, Sam? I've got an idea how this could be used to produce a greater benefit than I'm sure you ever visualized. 12 hours, Mac. Is it a deal? It's a deal.
But is it that urgent, Sam? Yes, it is. And bring Joe along, will you? Oh, sure. Now, look, Mac, I wouldn't ask you, but it's vital. Okay, Sam, if you think it's important. How soon can you be here? Well, it'll take us a couple of hours. Okay, Mac, see you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Well, Sam must think it important calling us out this time of night. Yeah. It must be something to do with Big Rat. Hold tight. We'll go over this once again, Professor. One, world intelligence will buy, what do you call it? The big rat. Two, no one outside these four walls will know of its existence. Three, it will play a vital role in maintaining world peace. I'm confused. Will somebody please explain to me how this crazy scheme's supposed to work? Okay, Professor. Let me describe what could be Joe's first assignment. File number 90. It contains what little information we have on the Russian MiG-242. This aircraft is the fastest and most heavily armed in the world today. We have nothing equal to it in the West. We have no weapons that can stop it. And so the Russians have the capability of striking and destroying us at any moment they choose. Now, question. How does your boy and the big rat help to maintain world peace? Answer. By capturing a MiG-242 and revealing its secrets to the West, thus restoring the balance of power. Now, this is how we would do it. A Russian pilot has agreed to hold a press conference in London. We'll be there. John Woodburn, National Express. Have you flown a MiG-242? And if so, can you describe its performance to us? I have flown the MiG-242 many times. As a matter of fact, I... This is our man, Mac. Did you hear that? that? He's flown the 242 many times. Are you sure we're going to get this recording? I hope so, Sam. A concealed antenna is right over his head. The team of 8,000. The entire program was scheduled and monitored by a computer. We know that you have no similar craft and no defensive weapons capable of intercepting it. Joe, it is a truly you can switch the machine aircraft. off now. Just you push the red button. Mark, stop it. Okay, Dad. Now, Joe, Uncle Sam and I are coming home immediately. Okay, Dad. See you in a couple of hours. I think you know the plan, Joe. Mac has managed to record the brain patterns of a Russian MiG-242 pilot. And now he's going to transfer all that captured knowledge to you. Are you ready? Yes, Uncle Sam. I'm ready. Good luck, son. Now, you know what to do. Just relax.
Now listen, Joe. WIN has provided you with some specially made equipment. First, a pair of glasses. Built in are the electrodes that your father normally connects to your temples that enable you to use the knowledge that's been transferred. Without them, you'll be Joe. But when you're wearing them, you'll have all the knowledge and experience of a Russian jet pilot. Next, a pistol, specially made for you. It's small, light, and will fire 200 times without reloading. A small portable transmitter and receiver linked to WIN satellite network will enable you to talk to Mac or myself from any part of the world. Okay, Joe. You're now WIN's most special agent. Uncle Sam! It's terrific! Joe, this may seem a strange thing to say to WIN's most special agent, but we have a long journey tomorrow, and I think you ought to be getting to bed. What, now? Yes, now. Thanks, Uncle Sam, for the glasses and the gun and that other thing. But if I'm a special agent, don't I get a badge? Of course you get a badge, Joe. Gentlemen, today is the first time that foreign correspondents have been allowed to view the 242 at close quarters. As you know, the details of the 242 are a closely guarded secret. And since you are all experts on aviation, with one notable exception... Uh... Where is he? Professor McLean, where is your boy? If you will exercise a little more patience... Well? Uh, contrary to what you have just stated, my boy is an expert on aviation. At this moment, he is probably climbing into the cockpit. And a few moments from now, he will fly it away. Then he'll battle his way through your air defense system and take the aircraft to England, where its secrets will be unraveled. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, please! Please! All right, Professor McLean. Very funny. And now tell me, where is your boy? Sam Luther from Joe 90. Airborne, over. Well done, Joe. Now the Russians are bound to launch other aircraft and will try to shoot you down. Remember, Joe, you've got the skill and the knowledge of the finest pilot in the Russian Air Force. There'll be no match for you. OK, Sam. I've got the picture. That's right, Control. One of the correspondents has stolen the MiG-242. Message received. Past description of man who stole aircraft. <laughs> well, Control. It wasn't a man, it was a boy. A boy? Uh, yes, a boy, aged about nine. A nine-year-old boy? Have you been drinking? <laughs> you are trying to tell me that a nine-year-old boy climbed into the cockpit of the world's most advanced aircraft and flew it away. Uh, yes, Commander. I will give you one final chance. Do you still persist in submitting this ludicrous report? But it is true, Commander. Dismiss. The man just leaving my office. Place him under close arrest. I will deal with him later. No, no, you can't do this. I've been telling the truth. A little boy stole that aircraft, and he was nine years old. Professor McLean, 
Please accept my government's apologies for this incident. I have arranged for you to be escorted to the airport in time for you to connect with your flight to London. Thank you, Commander. You've been most courteous. By the way, Professor, where is your boy? Uh, well, Commander, I should think uh, he's just about halfway between Moscow and the Russian border, uh, flying a MiG-242. <laughs> <laughs> Moscow Air Defense System, three interceptor aircraft launched, have instructed pilots to seek and destroy. Thank you, Base 513. This is Moscow Air Defense System. Alert all ground-to-air missile stations. Yes, sir. Sam Louver from Joe 90. Okay, Joe. Loud and clear. Sam? I'm approaching the Russian border. My instruments tell me that I've got three MiG-242s on my tail. They're about 200 miles behind me. So I'm going to turn and shoot it out with air-to-air -air missiles. Over. But Joe, isn't that kind of dangerous? Red 1 and Red 2, this is Red Leader. Bandit has turned to intercept. Stand by air-to-air -air missiles. Stand by to fire missiles. Five seconds. Stop me now, Sam. They may try ground-to-air missiles. And that's just what they're doing, Sam. They're throwing everything they've got at me. I can't chance it. I'm going in to attack the base. Okay, Joe. You're the expert. Sam, missile base completely destroyed. This is a great aircraft. Now look, Sam. I'm approaching the Russian border now. Have you obtained clearance for me to fly across Europe? Sure, I've obtained clearance. From now, it's a clear flight all the way to England. The authorities over here want you to land at Manston in Kent. <laughs> Fantastic. 
It's a MiG-242, all right. When I got the message from Central Control, I just couldn't believe it. But they're dead right. Okay, radio the armoured vehicles to close in. We can't take any chances. to control tower. There is no pilot. The cockpit is empty. We can't have got very far. Search the area and bring anyone who saw the landing up here for interrogation. Roger, will do. Now, let's go over this once again. You were very close to this aircraft when it landed. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. Now, when the aircraft stopped, you say the canopy opened, the pilot jumped out and ran to the airfield perimeter. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, think very carefully. What age did you estimate the pilot to be? As I said before, sir, as far as I could tell, he were about nine year old. Nine years old, eh? And then you say, when he reached the airfield perimeter, he jumped into a waiting car. That's right, sir. That's just what he did. And now I expect you'll tell me that the car rose into the air and flew away. As a matter of fact, sir, that's exactly what did happen. Well, you've pulled it off, Joe. A MiG-242 completely intact in the hands of the West. Oh, boy, what an achievement, eh? It was so exciting. But you know something? I'd rather fly with you. <laughs> That's my boy. And so, Professor McLean, that was the sort of operation that could be handled by your boy, Joe, with the assistance of the Big Rat. Of course, we all know there is no such aircraft as the MiG-242, and indeed there is no conflict between Soviet Russia and the West. I simply made up that little story to illustrate the sort of thing Joe could do to help us, if we had your approval. No, no, no! Professor McLean, you really expect me to... Dad, you've got Just to let me do it! Keep out of this, Joe. Go on, son. Now, look, Max, now look, look, you look, Mr. Weston. Although Joe is not my real son... But we know of Mary died, said. that boy has meant more yes, to me than... Yes, we know all that. No boy ever had a better father. And you expect that... me to risk his life. Just try to see our side. It's out of the question. Professor McLean, the opportunity's here to prevent war. Well, find someone else. To save human life. Joe's life comes... Make new discoveries. Just hold it, will you? Think of the potential, Mac. But Joe is so young. You won't regret it, Mac. I hope not, Sam. I hope not. Thanks. Joe! Can I do it, Dad? Can I work with Uncle Sam? Oh, I suppose so. If you're sure you want to. But don't come crying to me if you get hurt. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Uncle Sam. Mr. Weston, can I ask you a question? Why, uh, sure, Joe. What is it? When do I get my badge? Right now, Joe 90. Right now. 